Is it running now? All right. Good morning and welcome to Mountain View Baptist Church on July the 5th of 2020 for the second time. You all didn't wake up in time. Those of you that are on YouTube, everybody here was on time. Uh, but this is the weekend that we celebrate uh, the Declaration of Independence. And as I previously just said, that was signed July the 4th of 1776. The Constitution was then ratified or, or brought into effect, however you want to say it, in 1787. And so uh, we have the First Amendment, which I want to read that one to you, of the uh, uh, Constitution. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That's the First Amendment. Uh, let's see if I can find the next thing that I wanted to show you here. Uh, I think that was it. Uh, but it says how the uh, Constitution started. Uh, this is what I should have read you first here. This is how the Constitution starts. It says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish, uh, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So we are based upon uh, laws that are just laws. They're put in place uh, for our freedom so that we can have the liberty to live our lives. And one of those liberties is the religious uh, exercise, uh, and it's not to be infringed, okay? So... I want to make this statement to you right now. I know we've got visitors here. The rest of you all in weeks past, months past now, uh, we had you sign a disclaimer and things like that. You're here at church at your own risk. Uh, if you cannot maintain social distance, you need to wear a mask. If you feel unsafe, wear a mask anyway. Uh, that's okay, but we're not requiring it. Okay. Amen. Now, here in just a few moments, we're going to sing. Now, if you feel that that would make you unsafe or that you're afraid of catching COVID-19 and you won't hurt my feelings a bit, say, Pastor, we're going to skip the service. We're going to go home and watch it online, and that'll be fine. You can do that, but we're going to sing. Amen. Why? Because we have the freedom to do so, right. and, and the government cannot restrict that. And you're like, well, Pastor, what was for safety? Let me continue on. Now, Governor Newsom said that there's to be no singing or chanting. But yet he lost his moral authority to tell us what we can't do here assembled in a building that's ours because he did not stop people from chanting and yelling, no justice, no peace. Right. Okay, if he had stopped them two weeks ago, I'd been okay, you know, probably not been okay, but, you know, would have maybe accepted it. Sorry, Governor, you've lost your moral authority to tell us what to do when it comes to something like that. Sure. Now, there's Christians in the world today that cannot sing. Now they could sing, and they have the ability to sing, but they don't sing. And the reason that they don't sing is because if they do sing, people would hear them having a service, hear them gathered together, and they would be subject to arrest, imprisonment, and maybe even death. And that's in communist China that we know of. That's a communist country. Now, I'm not saying that COVID-19 is not serious. I'm not saying that it doesn't kill people. But what I am saying is our government is reaching out in a wrong way and trying to hinder us in our freedom to worship God. Right. Now, I'll say this. Um, everybody's going to die sometime. Okay? It's just part of life. We're all going to die. Whether it be of old age or whether it be of lead poisoning uh, at high velocity. That's just however it's going to work, okay? Now, uh, we, we're all going to get sick. Sometimes we get sick from what we eat. Sometimes we get sick from how much we eat and it builds up over time, okay? Do you understand that? But I would rather die from singing hymns to the Lord. Yes, sir. Okay? If I'm going to pick a way to die, I'd rather die singing praises to the Lord. Is that okay? Amen. All right. 
So now our government, if our government really cared, if they really cared about lives and lives were precious in their sight, you can just drive over here two blocks away and you can purchase some uh, marijuana at a state sanctioned store because they collect the taxes. Okay? And that's the only reason they're doing it. They want the money from taxes. They also, you can go down to a store down here, store up here, store over here, and you can buy all kinds of alcohol that destroys lives. People die in alcohol-related accidents. I think most of the studies would show, the stats would show, there's over 10,000 people a year that die in alcohol-related accidents. So if we just stop the sale of beverage alcohol, We'd lose a lot of tax money, but we'd save 10,000 lives a year just to get killed in the accident. That's not all the untold millions and, and lives destroyed and hurt and damaged because of alcohol-related things, okay? But see, the government's not going to stop cookies over here. They're not going to stop Budweiser or Jack Daniels from being stolen because they get the taxes. And Governor Newsom, you closed down the bars in 19 counties but you didn't close your own winery in Napa. Yep. You're a hypocrite, sir. You're a hypocrite, and I have the freedom of speech. It's not a bully pulpit that I'm using, I'm just stating facts, okay? Now, when you can have that bottle or that weed taken out of the store and taxes paid on it, and it's okay, and it's proven that some will die, but yet we have people, our government, trying to tell us that we're going to endanger ourselves or others because we come and say and that's criminal i'll be okay with being a criminal but i'm not okay with our government being communist yeah you understand that right we are we are being taken over by the communist and it, we're being taken over because we aren't saying anything about it now i just said something and when it comes up through the week, you need to stand up and say something. Yeah. You don't need to be unkind. You, you don't need to be, uh, let's say, really overly bombastic. Just speak the truth. Yes, Just speak the truth. Yes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. And Lord, we do thank you for the freedom that we have to be gathered here today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, that name that is above every name. And at that name, Every knee shall bow, and every, shun, every tongue shall confess Him as Lord. Father, I thank You for salvation that's in Jesus Christ and Him alone. That His blood was shed on the cross at Calvary over 2,000 years ago to pay for the sins of all mankind throughout all the ages. Lord, we come before You today gathered in Your name. We pray that You would put a hedge of protection about us. Protect us from the evil one and protect us from unreasonable and wicked people. We pray for our government and our leaders, first for their salvation, Lord, also for wisdom for them to lead us in a righteous way. And Lord, give us as citizens of the United States of America wisdom in knowing how to obey the righteous laws and how to go about changing the unrighteous ones where everyone in this country is equal and free, and there is no discrimination, whether it be because of ethnicity or religion or whatever else that it may be, because you created all men equal and you created all men free. Father, we pray that you would protect us from any disease that is around us, not only the COVID-19, but anything else. Lord, protect us from the pestilence, Protect us from unrighteousness and ungodliness. Lord, open the eyes of our understanding and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, help us to live for you in such a way that we would bring you glory and honor. And Father, we pray for those that are gathered here, whether it be in this room or in the junior church. Lord, if there's any that do not know you as Savior, we pray that today would be the day they would place their faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him as Savior. And Lord, they'll be saved forever. Lord, I pray that you would meet with us in a great way here today and that you would be pleased as we worship you. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Need a uh, need a hymn book number 457. Uh, Dean, do our guests have a hymn book there? I do not. I'll get one. And we'll get one of those. Brother Eric is going to come and lead us in number 457. Let's all stand together. Amen. Stand with me and join me on that first verse on the first two. Blessed be the name. Number 538 on that first verse. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. 
lots of sleep last night. Most of us here in Modesto probably didn't get to go to sleep until after midnight sometime because there was a lot of noise going on. Did anybody have a lot of fireworks? Man, we had some great fireworks around here. It's like, why go to an organized thing to pay to get in or anything like that? Just take a bucket and sit out here in the parking lot and watch the fireworks go off. I mean, some people, I don't know how much those things cost, but somebody, now think of that, here for America, people always want to talk about how uh, it's uh, not worked out good for them, not worked out, man, it's the land of plenty and uh, land of opportunity. Look how much money, we'll say it this way, with fireworks went up in smoke last night. Yes, sir. The millions upon millions of dollars that was yeah. spent in all to celebrate Independence Day for everybody, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to gloss over some of the uh, history of our nation. There's some things that we shouldn't be proud of, things that we shouldn't be, or things that we should be ashamed of, but we're trying to go in the right direction. We're right. trying to do things the right way in uh, mercy. There was a lot of celebration going on last night. A lot of that money could have been used around the world to do a lot of good, couldn't it? Yep, but America's done a lot of good around the world, Amen. too. So we were celebrating not just the flag, but what the flag represents. I understand there's some things that our country does that I'm not for. I'm not for the uh, slaughter of uh, unborn uh, children. Right. Uh, they're a baby at conception. I'm right. not for that whatsoever. I think that's unjust law, and it should have been uh, something done about it back in 1973. Yeah. And uh, so that's just, we're reaping what we've sown, and that's that comes out of the Bible there. Now, here for some announcements. Uh, we will have a 3 p.m. service this afternoon, so if you're accustomed to getting a Sunday nap, you just need to change it to a late afternoon nap, because we'll start at 3 and we'll be done by 4. And so be here, be in the parking lot if you can by 2.50, and we'll get you seated there. And uh, then on Thursday night, 7 p.m. is our midweek service, so be here 6.50, and we'll get you in, get you seated. And I'm just telling you, you know, uh, wear a mask in, wear a mask out. If you can't uh, uh, maintain social distance, uh, but you don't. I mean, we're not going to require you to do that. Uh, but you got to take care of yourself. Don't don't let someone else tell you how to live your lives. Okay? And they always want to. Everybody rails on the church for that. Well, we can't do this and can't do that. But it's amazing now you can have somebody else just say wear a mask, don't wear a mask. And you go back and forth on that. You Google wear a mask or not wear a mask. You'll probably get more websites than what you can read in a lifetime. So, here we'll let you know what's going on in Stanislaw County. Uh, today, there, uh, to date, has been 2,581 confirmed cases uh, here in uh, the uh, 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 county. And uh, I do not remember what the toll was last week. I think it was 2,000, wasn't it? It was exactly 2,000 is what the number I presented to you there last Sunday. Uh, it says that on Saturday... There was 1,172 tests that were confirmed or whatever, but only 50 were positive. Only 50 were positive. So that is the lowest recorded positive cases since June 22nd. So here we're kind of trending down. That's good. And it has nothing to do with the restaurants being closed because when did they close? They just closed on Friday. Yeah. So be careful that you're not being manipulated in right. the facts that you're being presented with, okay? Yeah. You want to be safe. And I'll say it once again, not saying that COVID-19 is not dangerous, not saying that people uh, haven't died from it. Uh, you know, they have, and they probably continually will. We're facing something here in our country, uh, but we need to make sure that we have educated uh, ourselves on what we should do and what we shouldn't do, and then we got to make a decision and live by it. 
Amen. But I'm glad you're here in church today. Now we're going to sing again. Amen. And I'm kind of looking into the camera when we do that. Number 250, you're like, Pastor, that's proof. It is. Amen. Amen. Proof that we love the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and we'll stand up for Him. Number 250, so let's all stand together. Amen. He keeps me singing. Number 250 on that first verse. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still. In all Proverbs chapter 16. Brother Eric's going to come and get us plugged in there just in a moment so that we have the lapel mic. Ready? Let's see how this works here. Hopefully, we're getting sound. We don't find out for sure until we upload the video. There was something else I was going to tell you, and I forget. We got green light there. Yeah. All right, so Proverbs chapter 16, and we're just going to look at one verse here and then get started in something. Now, springboard us then even into this evening's message, and you need to be here for 3 for that, 3 p.m., and uh, praise God. I kind of like it at 3 p.m. You're like, well, I don't like it at 3 p.m. Okay, well, I don't like it then either. <laughs> we'll just try to please you however it is, amen? And uh, praise God, I'm glad we're in church, amen? amen? I don't know if we'll be in church next week. 
I don't know if we'll be in church on Thursday. You know, with all these things happening and going on, and uh, you're like, Pastor, you're just all up there full of bluster and saying this and saying that. You know, if it was a matter of where I thought we were going to drop dead real quick, we wouldn't sing, we wouldn't come to church, you know, we'd be wise. Same thing if we were in the Midwest or uh, Idaho or some Montana and there was a blizzard that would hit, we wouldn't come to church. But we'd probably, before we got to the place not coming to church, I guarantee you we'd put our chains on and driven to church yeah. and, you know, done some things like that. You gotta live life. Yeah. Amen. You gotta live life. You gotta be safe. You gotta be sure of what you're doing. And, uh, but just, just be aware, our country's changing. There's a lot of things going on in our country that is very uh, unsettling that's taking place and how our leaders are dealing with it is probably more what's unsettling. They're just letting some things go and other things coming down on us. Why would they get us? We're, we're in here and probably we ought to take a video sometime if we knew how to uh, blot your faces out so that they wouldn't see who was here. Uh, we turned the camera around but we're social distanced. You had your temperature taken before you got in here. And if you have any symptoms or you're sick, you've been around somebody. If you're around somebody that's on sick on Saturday and you find out Sunday morning, don't come to church. Okay, I mean, if you, and I'm, I'm not talking about where they got a cold. I mean, it's full blown. You know that it's uh, COVID-19 or somebody calls you, you're, you're at a birthday party or 4th of July party on Saturday and somebody calls you Sunday morning, I got a temperature of 103. Hey, you're okay to watch it online. Yeah, I'd prefer that you did. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's being smart, being wise. But if you got a hangnail and don't want to come to church and you want to stay at home, that's not right either. Right. Well, pastor, it's not convenient for me to come back at 3 p.m. Hey, you might be getting a nap. There might be a health reason for that. I'm okay with that. But if you're just laying around the house, come on, get to church. Man, okay. Man. Because we've talked about this in the past and some of the videos that we made even before uh, we uh, were meeting back in person. Now's a serious time. If you're going to stand up for Jesus, now's the time to do it. Now's the time to do it. Time's fast coming short uh, when either the Lord's coming back or we're really going to have to pay uh, with maybe some blood, sweat, and tears for our Christianity. And if you have a hard time getting up and coming to church on time, being here on time, and, and paying attention in church and those kind of things, well, you're going to have a hard time with that blood, sweat, and tears when that comes around. Okay? All right. So we'll have you stand. We'll read this one verse together. Proverbs chapter 16. If you can find it there in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 17. It says, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Let's read it again. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you. And Lord, we just ask that you give us wisdom out of your word. And Lord, it speaks of wisdom and knowledge that we're supposed to get. We're supposed to put forth effort. We're supposed to look for wisdom as we would for silver or gold. Father, I pray that as we look at Proverbs today and then look at other passages of Scripture to help us give us insight into this highway of the upright and what it is and then to depart from evil. Father, that you would give us wisdom from on high that would come from you. And Father, I humbly ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, that your words here today would be powerful. Not my words, but your words. Lord, that I would say everything that you would have me to say, and I would not say the things that you would not have me to say. Lord, I just submit myself unto you and ask that you would use me and the people that are here and those that would hear this message. Lord, that you would strengthen us in our resolve to live for you. That we would be the witnesses of your grace and your glory and salvation in your name alone, as we should be, that we would carry out the Great Commission. Lord, please meet with us, we pray. Protect us from the evil one. Any words of your words that are sown in our hearts today, they would not be twisted, not be rested. They'd not be stolen away from us. We'd not be even blinded. Lord, that we'd be strengthened because we've been in the presence of Almighty God. Lord, thank you for loving us. 
It's in the Lord Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Now look there at that verse once again. It says, The highway of the upright is to depart from evil, and he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Now, for, an, uh, for a person that used to drive a uh, truck for a living, when you see that uh, word there that says highway, that just kind of brings to memory some things that I understand. That brings to things. When you read the Bible and you can relate to it in a personal way, that's going to help you to understand it. Now, you don't interpret the Bible by what you experience. You interpret your experience by what the Bible teaches. Okay? Because you can experience some things that are wrong, but if you go to the Bible, you can flip over, uh, uh, flip over there. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23, starting in verse 29. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contention? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? Those that go out and get drunk. Yep. That's who it is. That's the answer to those questions. Right. Hey, so I, have, I grew up, man, I was getting drunk early as a teenager and doing all kinds of things and living by alcohol, even called by uh, names of alcohol, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, so I know about those things. Man, I'm not going to say, well, it's okay to do that. No, I've read the Bible. I prayed and asked the Lord, Lord, what is drunk? And exactly one week later, he showed me what drunk was when a preacher preached from this passage. He said, you can't even look at it. I settled it right there Amen. for me. I wanted to know the truth. I asked God for the truth, and he gave me the truth. And that was like March 17th of uh, 1997. I've not had a drop of beverage alcohol. Amen. Okay? It's been settled. It's been settled. Amen. And God will settle questions in your life too. Now, look back there in chapter 16. Verse 17. So the highway, what, what is a, the, what's a highway? A highway is not a path. A highway is not a side street. A highway is a direct way to get from one point to another point, whether it be going in that direction or going this direction, whichever it is. Uh, and then uh, what's the upright? Well, upright is the opposite of unright. So upright would be the opposite of unrighteousness. So you would say this would be a highway of righteousness, if you will. Uh, uh, righteous uh, would be the opposite of wicked. Yeah. Okay? So the highway, uh, the highway of the righteous is to what? To depart from evil. To depart from evil. Well, how do you know what evil is? How do you know what evil is? You've got to have discernment. Where do you get discernment? From the Bible from the Bible and sometimes you don't even have to ask. Remember we, we always tell you if in doubt, if you if you're if you're doubting about something, Pastor, should I do this, should I not do that? What's just the doubt tell you? Probably you shouldn't do it. Okay. Pastor, should I rob the bank or not? You know, you call me and ask me that, well I'm gonna I'm gonna try to qualify. How big's the bank? How much money do they have on hand that day? Can you get away? And then are you gonna tithe? Right. <laughs> I wouldn't ask this question. Are you going to rob a bank? Man, I don't want to be around you. I remember going to, uh, go, I remember going to prison. Okay? I went there as a preacher and meeting a guy who was once a preacher, and he tried to say that he didn't know what was going on, but yet he kind of drove the getaway car. <laughs> and he was in prison. It's like, okay, because you were involved in a bank robbery. All right? So if you rob the bank, don't tell me you robbed the bank. Don't mark it on your on your tithe envelope, you know, robbery fund or whatever. Don't don't do that. Okay? And probably if you rob the bank, don't don't bring it to church. That'd be the price of the dog. We don't want it here. Right, amen. Okay? Now if you've earned it righteously, you got tithe on it. Okay? All right, so let, let's, let's keep looking at this. What's it mean to preserveth your soul? Because in the second part of that uh, verse there, it says, He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. What's your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. What you think, uh, how, uh, uh, how you uh, feel, and what you're doing. You know, how you feel is what you're going to do. Well, if it feels great, do it. Well, it might not be the wisest thing to do. So you need to have your thinking right. You know, that might feel good to do that, but that's not the right thing to do. So I shouldn't do that. So there's a righteous way to live life, and you're, you're going to stay away from things that will, uh, uh, that will keep you from living for God. See, your, your soul, your mind, your will and emotions, how you think, what you do, and how you feel about it, that's going to show you uh, where you're headed. 
which side of the road you're on. And we're going to get into that here in just a little bit. And it says to keep with your way. What's it mean to keep your way? Man, here's the one illustration uh, that I could come up with that everybody can see. As you drive around, especially in Modesto here, you can tell in what neighborhood you have renters, you have owners, and also when you have elderly or people that are struggling with either health or finances to keep their house up. You can drive down a street and it's sad when you see a nice house, nice house, nice house. And then there's a house that they've not mowed the grass all summer. The place has fallen down. And a lot of times, that's from it's an elderly couple there. They're not able to keep it up. Their health won't let them get out there and do it. And they don't have the finances to pay somebody to come in and do it. And their kids won't come in and do it. Whatever the situation is. Or you can drive by, you have nice house, nice house, nice house, and then you got a dumpy house. Man, stuff everywhere. They're a renter. They don't care. Now, what kind of Christian are you? Because you're displaying that whether you own your Christianity, it's good. whether you're just renting your Christianity, or whether you're in the place that you can't keep it up. Yeah. Amen. Not saying you might not be saved, but you're just not putting forth the effort. Okay. Now, you're in a safe place here because wherever you're at, if you're just a renter, we can get you an owner. Come on. Amen. How do you do that? Just get saved. Amen. Just get saved. You can be adopted into the family of God. You're like, well, pastor, I, I'm a child of God, but I just ain't doing so well. You're in a good place. You're among friends. We'll help you to grow. We'll help you to grow. We'll teach you how to take care of your yard. We'll teach you how to edge the sidewalks. We'll teach you how to sweep off the sidewalk or use a blower. We'll, we'll teach you those things. How to take care of the highway that you're on, okay? Because it matters. It matters. Now, uh, turn with me. Let's go to Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. So remember, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. We're not going to read this whole passage. We'll just look at this one verse, but look what it says. The Lord Jesus, uh, in verse 36, says, Master, uh, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. If you're not on the right highway, not living the highway the right way, you're, you're you're not doing that. You're not keeping your soul the way you should. You're not going to be able to love God the way that you should. It does matter how you live your life. It does matter. It does matter. So you've got to take care of that, okay? So we're trying to help you here with this. Uh, you can't be on the wrong road of life. You can't be on the wrong road and expect to live a profitable Christian life, okay? Now, you can be on the right road but going in the wrong direction. There's two ways that you can travel. It's either north and south, or it's uh, east and west. It's either heaven or hell. Now once you get saved, you're not on the road to hell anymore, but does it still seem like you are? So be careful with that. Now let's go. You're there in Matthew. Let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. See, we're supposed to love God with uh, all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Everything that we've got, we're supposed to love God. You're like, well, how am I supposed to love God? How, how do I do all these things? Well, he makes it very simple in John chapter 14 and verse 15. Look what he says. Jesus speaking here, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, now here you're, you're going to have people say, well, which ones? Which ones? I'll love them. All of them that's in your power too. All right. of them that you know too. Right. I guarantee you, for all of us in here, we're different levels of Christianity. But even for myself, there's some commands of God I don't understand yet. He's not brought me to the place that I'm accountable for that yet. But when I grow and I understand that and I read His Word and it says, you ain't supposed to be doing that, John, then I ain't supposed to be Amen. doing it. Now, Amen. I understand that's not good English, but it's a great <laughs> truth. Okay? <laughs> Now, so here, if you love me, keep my commandments. Everybody understands those verses, right? You understand that verse, right? Okay, look in verse 1. 
Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As a lost person, as a, a worldly Christian, you're going to have a hard time figuring out what God wants you to do. But when you start realizing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Amen. it's going to get you on the right path. You're going to be on the right kind of road, okay? Now, uh, in uh, John chapter, uh, you're, you're there, John chapter 14. Look in verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Hey, on this road that you're following, on this highway, there might be some fake manifestations of the Spirit. And it's not the Holy Spirit. It's a whole lot of fakeness going on. Yeah. You be careful that you watch out for that. Now, you can't drive on the left side of the road here in America, can you? You're supposed to drive on the right-hand side. What happens if you drive on the left side? It's still the road. It's still straight. It's still going that way. But you're going to run head, in, head on into somebody, right? Yeah. So there's rules that you have to follow by as you go. Hey, you can't drive on the shoulder. You'd say, well, you know, Pastor, it's still going this way. And when I think of driving on the shoulder, uh, I, I think sometimes of 580 as you're getting ready to cross the Altamont. You've come out of Tracy, right there's all this wide open space. You want to be on the three lanes of travel. You don't want to be over, over on the shoulder. Why? On the shoulder, you can't drive as fast. It's not going to be near as smooth. And you might run over something and damage your car. And how's your ride going to be then? This is going back a few years. I remember Bible college being on 101, driving it every day from San Jose area all the way up to South San Francisco. Man, traffic and traffic and traffic. I mean, it, it would take sometimes two hours to get from San Jose uh, to South San Francisco to the airport. Just being stopped in traffic. Stop and pull up. Stop and pull up. And I'm not talking automatic transmission. Some of you don't even know why I've lost you right there with the illustration. Man, your, your foot gets tired from pushing in out on the clutch. You'll take it out of gear just to uh, get your foot off the clutch sometimes. And here comes CHP, and he's in the center divide there uh, in the what you would call the emergency lane. He's trying to get around us, and he gets ahead of us. And then after we stop and go and stop and go, we get up there and we pass him. Why did we pass him? Because he ran over something and busted the tire. See, Christian, you need to stay on the well-traveled road. You need to stay on the righteous That's part good. of the highway. Come on. Amen. And you need to be headed in the right direction. And you can't go against the flow of traffic. You need to go in the way it's supposed to go. Man, and being a truck driver, I can tell you of some rough roads. Probably the roughest piece of road that I was ever on here in America in the uh, interstate system would be I-78. From Allentown over till it run into Interstate 81. All the time that I rode with my dad in the truck from a little kid going, I think I was, man, just young, young when we would go to uh, uh, New York City and come back. That road's always been rough. And then when I was in my 30s driving, that road was rough. It always seemed like they had construction on it. But I remember Dad telling me about it. I remember Dad showing me the effects of it. And I remember as driving my own truck going across there. But you would follow other trucks. And you would, you would, they would be bumps in the road, whatever it may be, pothole, whatever it was. But you would see the trailer tires underneath the truck in front of you completely come off the ground. And then go back down. Most of the time, it would be when they're empty. And that truck would bounce and it comes down real hard. And what it would do is break a spring. And you wouldn't know it. But a broken spring causes you not to be able to carry a heavy load later on. You got to get it fixed. So you can drive on the shoulder if you want to, but it may affect your ability to carry a heavy load later on in life. A lot of people ruin their Christian testimony. 
because they want to do it their way. Yeah. Now, let's think of this. I had it for later on in the message, but I'll give it to you now. If we were all going to the beach, okay, I mean, whichever, we'll just say, we'll say Monterey, and we're, we're going down to spend the day at the beach. You're going to load your family up. I'm going to load my family up. We're all going at the same time, and we're all going on this same highway. But my family and I, we stay on in the lane of travel. We stay on the road, man. And we get there. We get to the beach. And, you know, we have the time that we have, whatever it is. And then we're coming back. And so we've enjoyed the trip. And we've enjoyed the time at the beach. We've enjoyed the time as a family. And we're coming back. But as you were going, you just decided, well, I'm going to take a break. So you pull over to the shoulder. Or you just you decide, I'm, I'm just going to drive on the shoulder. You want to be stubborn and do it your way. Okay, you're not going to be able to spend as much time at the beach as we did. And you might not even get there till we're coming back. Mm -hmm. And your trip, you may have been able to spend some time along the shoulder and saw some things that we didn't, like all the trash that everybody's thrown out through the years. But you didn't have near as good a trip as the family that stayed on the road yep. and traveled the right way. Good. Hey, Christians, are you listening? Moms and dads, are you listening? Are you listening? How, how you drive this Christian life, how you operate on that highway that's of the upright, make a difference in your kids. Make a difference in your kids. Sure. Monday, we were able to go to the Bay Area and right up here at Ripon, and all my miles of driving was the greatest example of recklessness that I ever saw. So we're in the center lane of 99. Traffic is traveling probably 50, 55, getting into the construction kind of there at the bridge and stuff. It's not stopped. I mean, it's just going slow. And here you just hear a loud noise. It doesn't even really sound like a car. And so I don't know what was going on behind us. But this car, traveling way faster than we did, come right in front of us, come all the way over, went over to the third lane, and just kept doing that all the way, everywhere he could get through, uh, squeeze through. And just scared Evelyn crazy, which she gets scared anyway. And then that scares me, and you're like, oh, you know, and you're saying, can he do that? He just did it. I guess he can, but it's not legal. And then here come another one right behind him. That is selfish and self-centered, and they had no care for anybody else yeah. around them. See, I think a lot of the, we've noticed that drivers are getting more uh, uh, unsafe on the roads. Yeah. I think it's a sign of our society. Yeah. Seeing that spilled over into our Christianity too. Yeah, yeah. And get off the shoulder. Get off the shoulder. Don't be driving on the shoulder. Good. There's, a, there's an upright way. The Bible will tell you what it is. Yeah. You better follow it. Yeah. You need to stay on the right way. That's right. Good. Hey, don't don't be headed uh, westbound when you're supposed to be going eastbound. Yeah. And if you're headed to heaven, don't be living like you're headed to hell. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Because how you live your life will matter. Yeah. It will matter. You understand that? Now we're depart. We're to depart from evil. Uh, I'll read you that verse once again. You don't need to turn there, but. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. What's depart from evil mean? That's just an old-fashioned way of saying separation. Yeah. It's just old-fashioned, good old-fashioned, fundamental Baptist. No, it's not fundamental Baptist. It's Bible. Yeah, sure. That's it's right. Bible, and I'm sick and tired of people just saying, oh, you old fundamental Baptist, old fuddy does, all that. No, no, we're just being biblical, Amen. and you're Amen. being worldly. That's right. And you're running, you're running on the side of the road. You might be headed to the same place that we are, but you're going to tear something up in your life. Yep. I'd much rather live by God's rules. Now, with that in mind, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, depart from evils, just good, old-fashioned, Separation. And that's the highway of the upright. You cannot be on the highway of the upright as a Christian and expect to have the same quality of life and live a worldly life. Yeah. It's just not going to work. Second Corinthians, look in chapter 6. Chapter 6 and verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Well, see, there you, well, what's unclean? 
What's that mean? God will give you lots of, lots of wisdom in that throughout the Bible. Uh, here are just a few verses too. Verse 18, And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7, verse 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all unrighteousness, uh, from all, excuse me, all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And you've got a lot of people call themselves Christians, and I'm not doubting that they are, but yet they're not traveling on the upright part of the highway. They're doing it their way. Right. It ain't going to work out. Right. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot listen to worldly music. Right. You cannot have worldly influence and then expect to live a holy life. It's not going to work out. Right. You might be like that CHP officer. You'll get ahead of everybody for a little bit, but pretty soon those who just took their time, did it the right way, are going to pass you up, and you're left in the dust. Yeah. Hey, if your belief in God has not changed you to be more Christ-like, then you're probably not on the right road. Mm. Your belief should make a change in you. And I'm not saying you're going to get all that change right when you believe. It's going to be a process where you're going to grow. That sanctification. You're becoming more Christ-like day by day. Look in chapter uh, 5. 2 Corinthians in chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He's the same old creature. What? That's not what your Bible says? You all got the wrong Bible then. Come on. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's just the same old thing and he can get along in the world. No. What the Word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All Amen. things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. You're supposed to be putting off the old man and putting on the new man. Right. Amen. That's what you're supposed Good. to be doing. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. See, if you're going to depart from evil, you need to know what evil is. You know why some people don't know what evil is? Well, God deals with that. you got people who can't understand whether drinking alcohol is wrong, whether the worldly music is wrong, whether the worldly entertainment is wrong. The uh, Bible just deals with that. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and and evil. You can't figure it out. It's because you're dull of hearing and you're a baby Christian and you've proven it by your actions. Wow. James chapter 14, or James chapter 14. Don't turn to James chapter 4. Yeah, you won't find James 14. James 4 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is a sin. Now, how do you how do we learn how to drive? First, man. You learn how to drive by watching your parents drive or somebody else drive. You learn by example. Mm -hmm. So there's another illustration, parents, where you better be living your life the right way because that's where your children are going to learn. You, you, you can't be all amen and praise God at church and then be roast preacher on the way home. Right. Yeah. It ain't going to turn out good right, for your right. kids. Right. You'll destroy your kids. See, you learn by observation, but then for you to get your license, you've got to prove it by demonstration. Mm -hmm. DMV test? Come on. I'm, I'm always leery of something. I hope nobody's in here is this way, but I'm not picking on you if it is. Okay? But I'm always leery of somebody who can't pass their DMV test, especially the driving test. If it's the written test, okay, because I failed a few of those when I first came to California, too. You know, passed... I passed all of the tr all the trucking ones, you know, hazmat and all that, and I failed the general. Because <laughs> you got crazy laws here in California, okay? So you can fail the written test, but if you fail the driving test, you shouldn't be driving. <laughs> okay? Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. No man can serve two masters. Okay? No man can serve two masters. You can't drive both sides of the highway. You can't go in both directions at the same time. You're going to get nowhere. You're going in circles. You're stuck in place. Matthew chapter 6. Look with me in verse 24. It says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the right. other. You all in the right one? Matthew chapter 6? 
Oh, okay. Heard some chatter there. Thought maybe I was in the wrong place. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Right, yeah. Remember, this is a passage of Scripture here. Everybody always talks about blessed are the meek and blessed are those that mourn and all the, you know, the feel-good Christianity comes out of that. But yet they won't keep reading chapters 5, 6, and 7. Yeah. That's all Sermon on the Mount. Chapter 7 ends, uh, you, you either build your house on a solid rock mm -hmm. or you build your house on the sand. And that's whether you obey the Word of God or you don't obey the Word of God. You're either headed on the road going to heaven the right way or you're going in the opposite direction. Now, look here with me. I'm going to show you something here. Verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Here the Lord saying, now take no thought for your life. And He's teaching you here, hey, don't you worry so much about what you're going to eat and what you're not going to eat, what you have, what you're going to wear, all those kind of things. Understand, look in verse 31. Therefore take no thought saying what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Okay? You understand that? Look in verse 34. Therefore, take no thought for what uh, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take care of itself. Yeah, but look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Yeah. See, we worry too much about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, where we're going to retire, where we're going to live, and we're not worried about how we're living our life today. That's good. Because if you don't live your life today, you're not going to get to the destination in a good way, on time, and enjoy the ride. And we talked about the day trip. The day trip. If you have that day trip that goes on and that family stays on the road, they get to the beach, they share that time together, they get to come home, that's a healthy family. And that's what we need in our churches and in America, is healthy families. Right. Now, you have that other family, they're stuck on the roadside, <clears throat> They're not able to spend time together, whatever it is, at the beach. They're not able to enjoy that time. That's not healthy. And it shows up by unhappy. What do we see in America today? Unhappy. Unhappy. Because they just won't live on the righteous highway. That's not just Christians. That's everybody. There's a right way to live and a wrong way to live. Does that make sense? Now... I'll give you this illustration. Eric and I were talking yesterday, and we were talking about somebody who used to come to church here. I give Eric the illustration. He, he thought it was a great illustration. He still thinks it's a great mm -hmm. illustration. And I shouldn't have one, but how about a fan? Here, we got this fan up here. But you can have a fan, and it sits there, and you're like, oh, that's a fan. That's a fan. You know, and I could stick my finger in that fan and I could spin the blades, couldn't I? When I was a kid, you could do it better. Now too many kids have done it, you know, and they make them, you know, kid-proof. But you can stick your finger in there, you take a pencil or a pen or whatever, and you can spin that blade a little bit. Oh, boy, that's good. And it looks good, but it doesn't work. Right. What's it take to make that fan work? It's got to be plugged into the power source. Yeah, right. You're not going to be able to live on the right road if you're not plugged into the power source. Amen. And that's the yeah. Lord Jesus yeah, that's Christ. Good. Good. You're like, well, how do I do that? Get saved. Get saved. Turn with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. A lot of people are trying to do it by their works. What looks good? Yeah, you look like a fan, but you can't get that blade to spin unless you stick a finger in there. And that doesn't work good. And now you're no longer here. Because you hang out on the side of the road, uh, you're, you, you might be saved. I'm not saying you're not saved, but you hang out on the side of the road, pretty soon you're not going to be in church. Right. It's just not going to be worth it to you to show up. No, we'll, we'll come here today and we'll risk whatever the government officials can bring down on us. We're going to sing why? Because it's worth the risk. Man, the Lord Jesus Christ changed my life right. and I want to live for Him. And if all i got to do is sing some hymns, Praise God. Amen. That's not all I've got to do. That's what I get to do. Now, you have the eunuch there in verse uh, 36. Acts chapter 8 and verse 36. He asked this question. And they, as, they went on a, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? He knew what he was supposed to do. Right? 
What Philip tell him? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. If it was baptism, uh, water, uh, baptism, salvation, Philip would say, yeah, jump on in there. Yep. No, he said, you got to believe first. That's right. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Anybody can be plugged in. Anybody can get on the right highway. That's right. But it's up to you and how you travel. And how you travel. How's your traveling experience going you on the side of the road you know, I'm broke down preacher okay call road service Lord will help you he'll get you fixed come to church we'll get you fixed up I fixed a few cars here in the parking lot some of them weren't even mine come on we can get you fixed up but you need to get on the road and stay on the road don't go too fast don't go too slow and enjoy the ride. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If God spoke to you about something, you need to take care of it. If you know you're not on the highway, you're not saved, you need to get saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It's not some work you do, not coming to church, not joining the church, not being a Baptist, or being baptized. It's believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died on the cross and his blood was shed to pay for the sins of all mankind. And anybody can be saved. You say, preacher, I'm saved. But I'm not driving on the road. I'm driving on the shoulder. Or I'm even going in the wrong way. Why don't you just confess that to God? Ask him to give you wisdom and how to drive. Where to drive. To get you straightened out. But then when you ask Him, He's going to bring something into your life. He's going to have a preacher preach to you, have somebody teach to you the Word of God the right way. Then you're the one that has to be obedient to it. Take all the time that you need. Make things right with the Lord.